Boy, if you went to bed last night, you missed a doozy. The Cubs win another over the Dodgers, clinching their series in L.A. Thanks to three stellar defensive plays from Pete Carr Armstrong in the late innings and a five-run comeback in the eighth to stun the Dodgers. An awesome game, but what does it mean for this team as they push forward toward hopefully playing October baseball? Is there any hope left? We're going to talk about that and more on this edition of the Cubs baseball channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Stay in that comment section. Let us know what you're thinking as we invite you to our show. What's up, everybody? Hello and welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. My name is Anthony Pasquale, and you can find me on TikTok, um, excuse me, on Twitter at Ant underscore Pasquale3. And you can also find, here we go, the Cubs Baseball Channel on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. So make sure to follow us along on there as we tweet and uh, repost a lot of Cubs content, ask some questions, polls, all those sorts of things. So make sure you're staying in touch with us, not only here on YouTube, but on those other platforms as well but guys the cubs beat the dodgers yesterday six to three and honestly one of my favorite games of the year i think it was uh one of the cubs better wins of the season and i know it's late and i know that there's not a whole lot of hope in terms of the playoff odds but it was a good win to prove to this team that they are capable of beating some of the best teams in baseball obviously a two to one win over the yankees to finish that series last week was fine but you didn't really feel too confident that series when you only have eight hits. And even though your pitching staff only gave up six runs in three games, you lose the series. So you need to come out here and uh, out to LA and make a point, uh, make a difference and really insert yourself as a team that can win these types of games against these types of teams. And they beat the Dodgers six to three. The Cubs scored first in the top of the second inning. Um, a kind of a crazy game. The Dodgers made three errors and had a bunch of walks Um and then the Dodgers kept on hitting the ball to the warning track, and they couldn't quite get it over the fence. Um, except Shota Minaga did allow three home runs in the ball game. Tommy Edmond hit both his first and his second of the year off of Minaga, and he also gave one up to Max Muncy. But um, Edmond made a crucial error late in the game, and Muncy flew out to the warning track and Pete Crow Armstrong robbed a home run to end the game. So the Cubs got the last laugh there. They won six to three out hit the Dodgers 11 to three or 11 to eight, excuse me. And like I said, those Dodgers made three errors. The win of course, Shota Minaga. We'll get into him a little bit later. Porter Hodge gets the save, but the biggest storyline of the game, at least for me, Pete Crow Armstrong was excellent. Once again, you look at him offensively, two for four with two RBI, a really strong offensive game. But man, if you could see what this guy did in the field defensively, it was unbelievable. He made a sliding catch up against the fence in the seventh inning. Then in the eighth inning, one almost up against the wall in right center field. Him and Bellinger looked like they were miscommunicating. And Pete just kind of flipped his glove over and caught it on the backhand. It was a crazy catch. And then to end the game, battling some fans, um, he tried to rob a home run from Max Muncy earlier in the ball game, and instead a fan hit it, and it ended up being a home run. PCA got the last laugh with a extremely high leap over the fence to catch the ball and win the game for the Chicago Cubs. He was fired up. This guy just continues to build his stock toward a star player. He very easily could win the gold glove this year and could win for the next 10 to 15 years. He's that gifted defensively. We know the speed is top tier. You're not going to find a faster guy. But the, as the bat continues to develop, you're looking at a guy who has all the makings of a five-tool star here in MLB. And it's ex, it's been exciting to watch, and I'm excited to see the future steps that he takes um, in his big league career. Cubs use a five-run comeback in the eighth to beat the Dodgers. It was a crazy eighth inning um, for the Cubs as they used a couple of walks, a couple of hits, and a couple of errors to turn it into a five-run inning. But let's talk about it. Here's the eighth batter by batter for the Cubs. Ian Happ led off with a walk, and Dansby Swanson reached on an infield hit fielding error, depending on how they ended up uh, reviewing it. Just a little dribbler in front of home plate. He busted it down the first baseline. And uh, with that error, it made it first and second. Then Seiya Suzuki singled right up the middle 
and uh, Tommy Edmond booted the ball um, and then threw it away on the way to third base. So from second, Ian Happ scored. Dansby Swanson was going first to third on the play. He scored on the throw that got away, and Say Suzuki was awarded second base. So now it's a runner on second with nobody out. Cody Bellinger gets uh, intentionally walked first and second. Isak Paredes struck out. Michael Bush reached on a fielder's choice that also got away another error. So now it's first and second, and the run scores. Still just one out. Then a Nico Horner double drove in Cody Bellinger. And uh, Pete Armstrong grounded out a batter later to drive in Michael Bush. And then those were the five runs that the Cubs scored in the eighth inning. Then in the bottom of the eighth, Nate Pearson was throwing 101 on the radar gun. I didn't know he had that type of stuff in him. Uh, but he ended up getting out of the inning cleanly, thanks in part to a really nice sliding catch from Ian Happ, then another sliding catch from Pete Carr Armstrong. Then in the ninth, Porter Hodge comes in to buckle down the save. He ends up having a little bit of trouble breathing. It was kind of an unorthodox moment. Um, he ended up staying in the game and securing the save as fifth of the season. But anytime there's a breathing issue and you have a guy pointing to his chest, that can, of course, get a little bit scary. But Hodge gets the job done for his fifth save of the season. Now, I want to talk about the Japanese players for a second. Seiya Suzuki led the way offensively for the Cubs with three hits, including an RBI and a run scored. And then on the mound, Shota Imanaga against Yashinobu Yamamoto absolutely did not disappoint. Yamamoto coming off the injured list was only able to go four innings because his pitch count, they wanted him to stay around 60. He ended up throwing 59 pitches, struck out eight in just four innings, um, and the loss ends up going to a bullpen piece, Evan Phillips, who gave up four runs there. None of them earned, actually, in the eighth as part of that five-run eighth inning for the Cubs. As for Shota Imanaga, he gets his 13th win of the season as the Cubs continue to win every time that guy is out there on the mound seven innings struck out four did allow the three home runs but again goes deep into the ball game and gives you a really good chance to win and as you continue to get that out of Shota Imanaga in my opinion he should continue to soar up the rankings for National League Rookie of the Year and should probably get some votes for National League Cy Young you're not going to find a guy more valuable to the Cubs success this season and a guy that just every time he goes out on the mound it feels like the Cubs have a strong strong chance to win uh, win the ball game. Nate Pearson got the hold, and of course, Porter Hodge got the save. But it, it was a cool uh, moment to have these two guys that were playing professional baseball in Japan just a few years ago. And then you've got Shohei Otani and Seiya Suzuki uh, staples in each of the two teams' lineups, the Cubs and the Dodgers. So a really cool moment for Japan and baseball as they continue to grow globally. Speaking of growing, uh, this is more linear up the Cubs prospect list. Cam Smith, in his double-A debut at the Tennessee Smokies, had a two-run go-ahead triple. This guy just continues to hit. I think multiple platforms now have him ranked as a top 100 prospect in baseball. Uh, kudos to the Cubs, who drafted what seems like another easy-to-develop uh, college hitter that is going to be ML ready, MLB ready soon. This guy tears the cover off the ball. He did it in college. He did it in A. He did it in high A, low A, and now he's doing it in double A. So hopefully we see him in the big leagues relatively soon as he continues to rake in the minor leagues. Now the Cubs are still in second place in the NL Central, but just four games back now of the National League wild card with 17 games to go. The Mets lost yesterday and the Braves won, so they go back into a tie for that third spot. The Cubs four games behind the both of them. Now, the important thing to remember is as the Cubs try to gain some ground back, they have one more game against the Dodgers and then three against the Rockies this weekend. As for the other two teams, the Braves and the Mets, the Braves take on um, the Dodgers, who the Cubs are finishing up with to, tonight, and the Mets take on the Phillies. So tough matchups for those two teams as the Cubs get a favorable one in Colorado, obviously still have to win the ball games, But if there's any chance to really slim that margin down this weekend, might be the Cubs' last chance to really put the pedal to the metal. But right now, at 75 and 70, the Cubs are five games over 500 with a 2.4% chance to make the playoffs this season. They got another late, late game on the West Coast tonight. 9 10 p.m. is the scheduled first pitch. The Cubs against the Dodgers. Jordan Wicks back on the mound for Chicago, two and three on the year with a 4.03 ERA. And the Cubs are going to be up against Bobby Miller, who was having a really tough season. 
for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Two and five on the season with a 7.79 ERA. Allowed seven runs his last time out against the Los Angeles Angels. I believe a guy that the Cubs have had some experience against as well, um, even earlier this season. Um, Nico Horner, Dansby Swanson, and Seiya Suzuki have had some success against him, so keep your eyes on them as well. Um, as for Wicks, the Dodgers haven't faced him too, too much. Otani's two for three against him. Uh, Miguel Rojas, Max Muncy, and Kike Hernandez also have a knock against the Cubs southpaw who gets the start today. We'll see if the Cubs can sweep the Dodgers. You'd have to think they'd be riding with some high momentum heading into Colorado for the weekend series. And hopefully we are coming back here tomorrow to talk to you about that sweep with the Cubs over the Dodgers. But guys, thanks so much for joining us and listening to us and chatting with us, liking, subscribing, commenting, and following us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Thank you guys for all of it. We appreciate it. Let's see if the Cubs can make one final push and sweep the Dodgers. Go Cubbies. Oh, my God.